Welcome to MLab or Bajika Laboratory, where we explore ways to bring our ideas to life. I'm your host, Nisha McCray. In past episodes, we've used CAD or computer-aided design alongside digital fabrication equipment, such as our desktop cutting machine and a 3D printer, to bring to life a mask inspired by Lion King and an interstellar tesserae planner inspired by the 50th anniversary of NASA's Apollo 11 mission. For this spooktacular MLab episode, we're gonna explore our slightly evil side through one of my favorite Disney villains brought to life. Maleficent. Roll the clip! Five years ago, I thought I lost you forever. There is no curse that could ever tear me away from you. Will you marry me? Yes! Mistress, I have a little bit of news. Don't ruin my morning. You have done an admirable job going against your own nature to raise this child. But now, she will finally get the love of a real mother. Tonight, I consider Aurora my own. There is no union! There will be no wedding! What have you done? We go home now. Aurora! Maleficent, a powerful fairy, serves as a protector of the Moors, a magical forest realm bordering a human kingdom, as well as a human girl named Aurora. When Aurora accepts a wedding proposal for Prince Philip, Maleficent finds herself in the midst of a growing war between humans and fairies, led by Prince Philip's mother, Queen Ingrid. In life, every villain is the hero of their own story, and Maleficent is no different. It's the way in which we choose to respond to those challenges, whether betrayal from a close friend or threat to our way of life, which dictates whether we are the villain or the hero of someone else's story. In fact, when it comes to Maleficent, I find that I can relate to her character, especially her actions in response to the humans who seem way too eager to always invade her realm. She may have 99 problems, but do you know what isn't one? Style. It's her magnificent style that I have a deep, insatiable desire to capture here in MLab. And given it's been a minute since we've done a project to tickle our sweet tooth, let's see if we can capture her essence through a delightful treat, caramel apples. In order to make our Maleficent caramel apple, we have to use several techniques, including sketching, fabrication, and a lot of sugar. And I do mean a lot of sugar, and a wide variety of forms, including chocolate, and caramel, of course. This project can be done solo or as a family project to explore this Disney villain in a fun and engaging way. As always, you don't have to be an artist in order to get started on this project. We can simply draw inspiration from costume designer Ellen McRugnick, who received an Academy Award nomination for Best Costume Design for Maleficent. While looking at our design for inspiration, we decided to focus the design of our Maleficent Caramel Apple on her official calling card, her horns. In order to do so, we're gonna import an image of Maleficent's headpiece and use it as a canvas for our sketch. Instead of using Sketchbook to create a sketch of Maleficent's headpiece, we're gonna use Autodesk Fusion 360. If you prefer an alternative, you can complete the next step in Adobe Illustrator, Rhino, Inkscape, or any other design software. Using Fusion 360's sketch feature, we're gonna create a 2D trace of Maleficent's headpiece using two simple sketching tools, including the line tool and the arc tool. So let's start off with the straight parts of Maleficent's headpiece. First, we will trace the straight lines using our line tool, starting at the top of her horns. Next, we're gonna tackle the sharp edges as well as the round ones using the arc tool in order to create a couple of half arcs. Now that, Beastie, is a sketch if I've ever seen one. For real, for real. At this stage, once we have our sketch, we can export our sketch as a DXF file or a 2D drawing, like we did for Nala's mask in our Lion King episode, in order to bring our horns to life using our Cricut Maker and chocolate. Or 
Given we want to make our Maleficent horns as realistic as possible, we're going to extrude our sketch into a 3D model and send it over to our 3D printer, a Dremel 3D20, to bring to life. In order to print, let's first load our CAD file to a 3D slicing software. Now, for those uninitiated MLab viewers, 3D slicing software, such as Ultimaker's Cura or Dremel's Digilab, is software that will translate our CAD or 3D model into thousands of slices, the 3D slicing and 3D slicing software. Afterwards, the software creates instructions known as G-code for our 3D printer to know exactly what to print for each slice to form our complete 3D print model. Once we have our G code, I'm going to download it onto my SD card, insert into my Dremel 3D20, click build, select the SD card, click the actual file, and presto. Now that we have our Maleficent horns, we can start assembling our magnificent Maleficent caramel apples. Man, that's such a fun thing to say. To do so, we must transform our MLab studio into an impromptu candy cauldron shop filled with a little Disney magic. Let's get started. In order to create our Maleficent caramel apple, we're going to need to transform our Maleficent horns into a more edible form. Using composite mold of food safe molding material, we can create molds from our 3D printed Maleficent horns that we can later fill with chocolate. Mmm, chocolate. To create our molds, we zapped our composite mold in the microwave until it goes from this to this. Next, we gently place our 3D printed horns into our silicon baking cups and then gently, very gently, pour over our 3D printed horns with the composite mold until it's completely submerged. Once you don't see any bubbles, feel free to lift up and use a bamboo stick to make sure that your 3D print is completely submerged and doesn't float to the surface. Once satisfied, place in the fridge to chill. After a few minutes, you can test if the mold is ready by touch. But wait, it's time for the word of the day. Cavity, a noun to describe a hole or what happens to your teeth when you eat too many sweets and don't brush your teeth twice a day. Let's use it in a sentence. If your composite mold bounces back slightly, you can remove your 3D print from the composite mold and begin filling the hole or a cavity huh? with chocolate. Then place it in the fridge until the chocolate hardens. Cavity. Stay healthy, kids, and brush your teeth twice a day along with flossing. That's what Miss Nisha says, courtesy of MLab. While we wait on our horns to form, let's go ahead and make our caramel apples. In order to make our caramel apples, you're going to need at least an 11 ounce bag of caramels, three apples, and two tablespoons of water. In terms of apples, I usually prefer gala apples as they are sweet and crisp and seem to complement the caramel well. However, I am also making a version using Granny Smith so we can take advantage of its tart flavor as well as its green color. Not at all because I'm being forced to use it against my will. <laughs> First, wash your apples in lukewarm water in order to ensure they are clean and remove the wax from their exterior. Once rinsed, make sure you thoroughly dry your apples and remove the stems. Next, we can begin to unleash our evil side by lightly stabbing each apple with a wooden apple pick. Then, place your apple on a cookie tray with a layer of wax paper and then straight to the fridge to chill. While we are allowing our apples to chill, we can get started with our caramel. We are using a candy melts pot for our caramels as it keeps our caramel warm without being a burn hazard to anyone on set. If you don't have one, feel free to use your microwave or stovetop. Just remember, safety first. As you can see, we've already dumped our entire bag of caramels and two tablespoons of water inside our pot. Caution, if you didn't already purchase unwrapped caramels, please make sure you've unwrapped all of your caramels before dumping them in your pot. We don't want any melted plastic on our caramel. 
trust me, I know from personal experience. Once you have your caramel melted, feel free to grab your apples, remove them from your tray, and gently spray your wax paper with a little bit of cooking spray to prevent your caramel apples from sticking. Next, take your apples and very gently dip one at a time into your caramel while spinning your apple. So we're gonna do a quick dip and then a quick spin. Spin a little bit more. Make sure you spin just to get off any excess from your caramel apple, and that looks good. Once you finish your caramel apple, you probably are familiar with it by now, place your apples back in the fridge until completely hardened. Now, let's check on our horns to see if they've actually formed. So here we see that we have our composite mold. When we can tell that the chocolate is firm, we're going to gently remove the chocolate from our composite mold and then place them on our workstation. And see here, like, <laughs> oh my gosh, just look how magical her horns turned out. Once our caramel apples have hardened, we simply dip them in chocolate and attach our Maleficent horns on top. And we have our Maleficent caramel apple. It seems we had one, two, three actual fairies complete a few caramel apples for us. And given it's the season for Disney villains, we decided to also make caramel apples inspired by Maleficent's colleague, Ursula, to accompany her. We used CAD to create our model of Ursula's tentacles to decorate our Ursula evil apple. If you want to take a bite out of this project, you can find our complete step-by-step -step guide on how we brought our Maleficent caramel apple to life, as well as Ursula and another Disney villain, if you're up for a bit of a challenge, on our Instructables. Now, let's capture the rest of Maleficent's essence. Well, well. Now, we're ready to bring peace to our realm with these delectable desserts before the battle with the humans. But before I head into battle, I would like to thank everyone who helped make this MLab project a reality. The Tug Organization, Autodesk Education, Hawthorne Youth and Community Center, and last, but certainly not least, Boston Neighborhood Network. If you would like to learn more about MLab and Bajika, check out our website, bajika.org, as well as our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, until next time, Beastie, build, make, learn. Ah!